We get the word liberty from liberal. For thousands of years, liberal was an adjective meaning to do something freely or openly. It became a political noun with the classical liberal philosophers around the 18th century, thinkers such as John Locke, Adam Smith, and John Stuart Mill. John Locke rooted his idea in the assumption that before governments, human beings lived as autonomous hermits. Essentially, we lived on our own, perhaps in our own little caves, our own little sheds, or whatever it is, and we lived off the land, and we interacted with each other for purposes of trade and mating, of course. As populations grew, and land became more scarce, we needed some sort of governing body to keep us from infringing on each other's natural rights. That is why we have government. And therefore, as long as government fulfills that role, then government is legitimate. When government infringes on our rights to a certain point, then the government is no longer legitimate, and the people are justified in creating a new government. Adam Smith, he, he focused on the economic side of classical liberalism. He wrote The Wealth of Nations, and he argued that a free market virtually unfettered by government intervention yields the greatest prosperity for everyone. He argued that people who are self-serving actually benefit everyone just as a result of their own desire to make themselves more prosperous. One of his famous lines is that the butcher, the baker, and the brewer do not provide these goods as a public service, but because they want to make money. Um, that's just a rough, crude paraphrasing of Adam Smith. Uh, John Stuart Mill, he focused on social liberty, and he was very critical of both government and society when it oppressed the freedom of choice of the individual, mainly the right of the individual to pursue happiness or to pursue what he called the higher pleasures. These classical liberals were pragmatic, and they acknowledged the limitations of their own liberty premise. Smith, for example, the original capitalist, you might say, Smith acknowledged that a totally unfettered market could result in monopolies, companies cornering markets and having so much wealth that they can control the lives of everyone else. Adam Smith called this a market failure and argued that under such circumstances, government should intervene, thereby breaking up monopolies to ensure a continuous free market of competition. Adam Smith also supported government funding of education, and he supported a progressive income tax. So, he believed in a large amount of liberty, but not total absolute economic liberty. I could use examples from the other two as well, but I want to keep this short. Unlike the more radical libertarians of our time, I'll do a video on them as well, but unlike them, classical liberals knew that there is no, no perfect liberty. They essentially wanted to enhance liberty by trying to balance the powers of government and company and individual, etc. So, maximizing liberty was their ultimate goal. Any ideas today that we call liberal, we should ask this question of them. Um, is liberty their ultimate goal? We can argue about how to obtain maximum liberty, but we need to ask, are they really pursuing liberty ultimately? Or are they pursuing some other goal, and is liberty just a means to an end? As long as liberty is their premise, and liberty is their ultimate goal to enhance, then it's fair to say that they are a school of thought under the liberal umbrella. Otherwise, the term liberal is nothing more than a team name, a label that has no meaning outside of a particular political context.